Welcome back to this week's Carpinionated, our weekly show about cars, the car industry, and a little bit of opinions thrown in for the just for fun. Uh, and I think that this week, Jeff, we will have opinions. Yes. Yes. So uh, we're going to talk about Tesla. And Tesla has not traveled a smooth road of late. Let's put it that I know, I know that's an easy way to put it, but well, I was a photographer and I wasn't a writer. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Jeff, what, what do you think is like the standout thing in your mind about what's going on at Tesla? This is all the product of a, uh, a guy who seems to be easily distracted by the next thing. Um, mm. It's clear that Tesla is the dominant electric vehicle maker in the US, uh, probably the dominant EV maker in the world, at least as of this moment. Um, but a lot of the things that have happened since uh, they sort of established themselves in that role have been it seems to me products of the CEO of Tesla um, getting focused on other interests that he has outside of what is honestly sort of a drudgery type business of making and selling cars. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the biggest examples of uh, his sort of lack of interest in Tesla right now was the company's decision to fire virtually the entire division of Tesla devoted to the supercharger network. Which, which is their crown jewel. It is the crown jewel. And it's also uh, by virtue in many ways of Tesla's pro dominance in the market and also lobbying by the company the North American charging standard. Every yep. electric car made in the US has a connector that will fit a Tesla supercharger. And the thing that the supercharger network is that literally no other EV charging network in America is, is reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, so the supercharger network is the standard in the US. Um, EVgo is frequently riddled with service outages. Electrify America, which was sort of created uh, as Volkswagen's penance for Dieselgate, uh, also is incredibly unreliable. So the supercharger network is kind of the deal. And mm -hmm. once all major automakers who do EVs in the US said, okay, we're gonna start offering our cars with connectors to fit the NACS, uh, Tesla decides to can the entire supercharger division. I, I, and, I'm what apparently was a whim. And evidently when people talked about this or asked questions about this on X, which is uh, one of the distractions of the CEO of Tesla, of course he owns X, um, his response was, we're going to focus on keeping 100% um, service uh, and then strategically build out. It appears that the company is backtracking on that a little bit and is rehiring some of the people or trying to rehire some of the people it had terminated uh, over the last few weeks. Um, again, I, this is also uh, a sign that um, of a potential lack of focus on the business of Tesla because mm -hmm. uh, SpaceX is still a thing. And, uh, Neuralink just got approval to implant a chip in a second uh, patient. Um, those are far shinier and far more interesting. Once and and it may be that the CEO of Tesla believes that um, the innovation at Tesla is done. Also, the government is sort of um, more aggressively sniffing around the company uh, because it continues to have questions about how the company is full self-driving and this is a brand name uh yeah. <laughs> technology is deployed and how it was sold mm -hmm. because if there's anything that uh people should be clear about in any of these driver assistance technologies 
be they the one from General Motors or Ford or Tesla or anyone else, at this moment, no car is self-driving. There isn't a single car on the road in America that will guide itself down the road without input or monitoring from the driver. And uh, the question seems to be whether um, people who bought Teslas believing that their cars could drive themselves were misled or sold a bill of goods. Uh, the government is very interested in knowing about that. Um, there is also the fact that, and this is not necessarily uh, Tesla's doing, although certainly their uh, success has uh, has spawned some of this, is that there's a lot more competition in the EV space now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's coming at the moment that EV demand in the U.S. is softening. And we've talked about right. this on this podcast before, that the take up for electric vehicles in the U.S. was never going to be a straight line. It was never going to be linear. There mm -hmm. would be sort of steps and plateaus that would come along uh, in the dr drive to EV adoption. Uh, certainly more people are buying electric vehicles now than did a year ago or two years ago, but the rate is not nearly what it was. And so Tesla finds itself in a far more competitive environment in the U.S. Um, even as the Cybertruck uh, rolls out, uh, with a series of uh, issues, um, everything from the trim pe uh, the trim panel fell off the accelerator pedal and got the gas pedal stuck uh, on some cars, to the uh, giant hubcaps on the wheels digging into the specially Big designed image. tires, uh, and even the editor of the Autopian, David Tracy, uh, had a uh, a cyber truck that uh, is in the process of being sold by uh, Autopian's um, money partner, Galpin Motors in Los Angeles, uh, managed to kind of slice his hand open, reaching uh, into the back, uh, reaching over the sidewall of the Cybertruck, which is sort of confirming what a lot of us thought is like, geez, that's, that aluminum looks very, or that stainless steel looks very sharp. Um, so, I mean, all of that is happening. And so you have a lot of these cars that are now available, a lot of EVs that are now available from a lot of different manufacturers. Look at Hyundai Kia. And we've talked, we praise Hyundai and Kia all the time mm -hmm. on this podcast about how they've really, um, they are really kind of firing on all cylinders when it comes to design and capability and value. I mean, you look at uh, cars like the EV9, this uh, new uh, SUV that Kia has brought out, or right. um, the uh, the Hyundai Ioniq series, um, all striking cars, all with um, certainly uh, technology that is on par with the rest of the class. And then you look at the Tesla, which just redesigned the sedans, um, uh, at least the front and rear bumpers, and maybe the, the lights. The lights, yeah. But it's still the same car they've been building for the last 12 years, really, mm -hmm. the same basic design. And it's fine, but also people like new things. And, um, and I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a parking lot and like white Tesla, white Tesla, white Tesla, white Tesla, white Tesla, yeah. you know, and silver Tesla, and then maybe mm -hmm. a red one. And, you know, and it's just, it's this bland you know, which for me goes again to their interiors and their everything. I'm like, you know, uh, people can say, well, you know, I don't need a car that changes, you know, model that changes it. Well, it kind of, it's something new. It's something that's a little different. It's something, you know, hey, that's cool, you know. Yeah, exactly. And part of the issue that Tesla is now also facing is increased pressure in China, which is a giant growth market for cars in general, and a giant growth market for EVs. And unlike the United States, where the Biden administration is in favor of uh, 100% tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles, um, uh, China Tesla does not have any such protection uh, in China. Uh, and uh, the Chinese car buyer has myriad 
vehicles at their disposal, which are all less expensive than the Tesla, look far more modern and do pretty much the same stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw uh, a review of uh, cars from BYD, um, which is not a Michael Jackson song. Um, it is, uh, it's actually, the acronym is for Build Your Dreams. Build Your Dreams, yeah. I actually read that on the back of a BYD I saw in London uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, and they're fantastic and they're incredibly reasonable and because they're being built incredibly and expensively. Right. Um, and so there are issues on a number of different fronts here for Tesla. And if this was a normal car company, the company would sort of figure out how to get through it and would you know, roll out some new product, maybe a less expensive car. And Tesla has talked about uh, every now and then a $25,000 Tesla. The last thing we heard about that from the CEO at, uh, I think it was the shareholders meeting here not long ago, was that they were really more focused on autonomous driving, your sort of autonomous taxi, I guess. Um, and the ultra expensive consumer vehicle um, was not really a priority of the company anymore. And and uh, I and I heard that whole thing where robo taxis and stuff, and I'm like, is this like a Roomba that you ride in? You know, does it yes. does it yes, go it home at night? Does it go home at night and plug itself in and like you know everything? Probably. Yeah. I mean, but again, the uh, the the curve on that is really steep. I mean, you just you know you say Waymo to people in California and they get scared. Right, because uh, right. they had so many problems with Waymo taxis in San Francisco, um, and uh, it, it's it's that the, the technology is going to take a long time, and they're going to have to break a lot of eggs to make it work. And, um, and uh, one other thing, okay, so you live in a very dense urban environment, mm -hmm. right? Yes, I live in a nice suburb, and it's ten miles to downtown Hartford mm -hmm. and you know any kind of taxi ride takes some distance therefore it's got some cost mm -hmm. and and you know and think of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of places who meet the standard of you know central Connecticut or are below that where they're where you know you don't have to go very far from here to to be in agricultural land Sure. And and what's your what's your use case for a robo taxi? Like, are you selling that to the people in you know Baltic or you know Scotland, Connecticut, you know, with a thousand and you know fifteen hundred people or something? I'm, I might be wrong on that population. Yeah, figure, it's but... clearly yeah, it's clearly the kind of thing that is very specifically directed at people who are at agencies or taxi companies in. Uh, New York or San Francisco, Chicago, London, um, Tokyo, uh, Beijing and Shanghai, probably, mm -hmm. you know, places you're right, where there's Mexico City, where there's tons of people and it's incredibly urban and there is a market for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, th I think there's a very clear reason why the, uh, the self-driving taxis Waymo, whatever the other ones were, were not tested in New York because I think they would be eaten alive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I just see this like, yo, know, all these yellow cabs, like, you know, like, you know, chum in the water. Right. Sharks, yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, yeah. Hey, what? I'm driving <laughs> uh, And the other, the other issue that uh, is sort of now befalling the CEO of Tesla is a very real question having to do with his income. Uh, the uh, company had been poised to approve a compensation package that totaled about $55 billion. And uh, there was one sort of shareholder yeah. revolt that got uh, tamped down. And apparently now there is another one. Uh, and so the shareholders are facing a situation where they may have to uh, 
Uh, they may be soon asked to vote to reject the idea of what I think is the largest compensation package ever even proposed for any kind of CEO ever um, at a time when that com that specific company, Tesla, is under pressure from the regulatory side, from the demand side, and uh, from the competition side. And and I look at I mean the 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 clear inequity of asking for that pile of money at the same time that you're doing layoffs. I, I, when you drill down in the layoffs, you have the worker on the line, right? Who's who's being laid off. You have interns who were brought the you know going to be brought there for the summer, expecting to work for you know during the summer, who now don't have those jobs. You have, like you said, the the supercharger people, um, they, uh, you know, all those people that are part really seem to be part of the main infrastructure. A at the same time, you're asking for this, you know, wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows of money. I, I, I it, it just optically, it's a mess, <laughs> you know, and and so many things are so clear you know, to, you know, people like us, like, why did you spend all that money on the cyber truck? And it came out that way. You know, <laughs> what, what, why do you insist on doing X? Not to, you know, why not, you know, you ins insist on doing things, you know, like Z, and it clearly is not getting you anywhere. And, and, and again, this is a, uh, this is what happens when you're sort of ego-driven, uh, sort of entrepreneur-minded person um, winds up in a business space. Is they just sort of they become kind of I think they become kind of peripatetic, like they're sort of bouncing from thing to thing to thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, they bought uh, what used to be Twitter uh because they had some idea that they were going to make it this grand uh arena for free expression and uh I, I mean i somebody has to tell me what it's like because i haven't been on it in a while um and uh and then you know you have uh the sort of ongoing issues with tesla and uh and they're you're sort of running out of things to jump to i mean i suppose there's you know there's always Neuralink, i guess uh but then <laughs> which but then has the, its own problems well yeah. that's true yeah exactly yeah. they've already you know they the feds were threatening to kind of slam the brakes on that because the one uh patient wound up back in the hospital for uh something related to the surgery to implant the chip but uh, evidently, they're going to go forward with a second, uh, a second test uh, subject now. I, 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 you know, the, it's not necessarily a Tesla problem, but it is. Then you have the whole Hertz debacle. You yeah, know, where gosh. where like we're going to buy three hundred, you know, thirty thousand EVs, and most of them are going to be Teslas, and then like less than two years later, you know, uh, we think we're going to sell those. And and for two reasons. Um, well, there are two issues here. First of all, they're selling them because people didn't want them um, for whatever reason. Either they felt like they weren't correct for the sort of driving they intended to do mm -hmm. on their trip. They didn't buy them because they were concerned about the connotation associated with the CEO of Tesla. Um, uh, for whatever reason, the customer's right. They don't want the Tesla. They don't get it. So they're going to sell them. The problem Hertz is having is that in the time between buying all those Model 3s and selling all those Model 3s, Elon Musk slashed the prices of Model 3s, thereby tanking the residual values for all of these cars. So Hertz is being forced to take a bath on this experiment, really, in EV adoption, at least in the rental car space. Um, and my guess is it might be a minute before another company takes a similar gamble and, and it and, may be with a different and it may be with a different company right right uh, and it's certainly a different scale mm -hmm. certainly a different scale yeah i just it doesn't make a lot of sense you know and and then 
you know, then you can, can continue to come back to the quality issues on the cars. And and the other, you know, the the repair issues. So I watch Wham Bam Tesla Cam every Sunday morning and uh, on YouTube. And it's a series of, you know, videos from the Tesla cameras and, you know, security system. And they're constantly like, you know, a car, get, you know, Tesla gets hit the rear end. And, and and I'm no expert on you know repair costs, but I'm like, oh, that's a six, seven thousand dollar repair. Twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's gonna take four months. Mm -hmm. And and that has to do with the way the car is constructed because they have two big pieces of metal that they've made that forms all that substructure, mm -hmm. and you know, that gets hit. And now you have to replace all that. And, you know, basically then you toss the car away. Right. Yeah. And that's true. There was a period of time when it worked out for people, you know, during the, the height of used car prices where they'd have a year or two old Tesla, it would get, you know, totaled. And, but, but because of the value of the car, they could go out and buy a new Tesla. Right. And so it's, you know, so that worked out, but that was a very small window. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it I disappeared. just saw, I just saw a, a thing today that shows that used car prices are, if not at the sort of pre pandemic level are approaching that. So yeah. that the sort of used car bubble of 2021 and 22 is um, ebbing now. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a, it's a difficult situation. Uh, it, it it is. It'll be interesting to see over the next year whether any of it causes Tesla to lose its status as being sort of the electric car mm. uh, in the United States, or I guess whether another <clears throat> car uh, uh, rises up to challenge it. Um, I don't think it's the Mach E, although uh, I think those are awesome. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the EV Blazer um, or no. any of the Ultium cars yet. Um, so we'll see, I guess. Yeah, and I I don't know. It's like I I, I look at I look at you know the the car and the minimalist aspect of it, and I just I, it's not my taste. It's not my, you know, and, but you, but they've never offered any other, you know, option to, to that. When, when you look in, and I, and I looked at the uh, Rivian, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I haven't been up close and personal to one in since the first pickup rolled out, but look how much texture and je ne sais quoi. You know, mm -hmm. that that vehicle has. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're losing money. I totally get that, you know, and but but it you look at them and you say, OK, they have a plan, right? It was the pickup. It was the big SUV. Now it's the smaller SUV and then the smaller still. And and how much interest that generates. Mm -hmm. Right. And. And and how. How much. You know, you put cloth in an interior, a nice cloth, or put it on the dash or something. It speaks to some quality. It speaks mm -hmm. to some, you know, internal thing like, wow, that looks really nice. And I feel good about paying $80,000 for it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and I just don't, you know. Isn't and, it interesting? And I've thought about this a lot, too. Isn't it interesting how Tesla has managed to really reset the expectations of the luxury buyer. I mean, we've been beyond Landau roofs and um, crushed velvet velour seats for some time. Thankfully. Sad sadly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but for a long time, the uh, Lexus really was your kind of default position for luxury car, you know, kind of plush leather, nice understated woods, warm colors, uh, and that sort of thing. And then you, you know, in 2012, Tesla rolls in and it's all 
it's all tech it's all screens and displays and uh the wood is very gray and minimalist and the leather is just kind of leather unless it's i don't know if it's leatherette i assume it's one of those two or i guess they call leatherette vegan leather these days which is fine it's whatever um <laughs> and and so many car makers have picked up on that and have sort of decided and a lot of buyers have decided this must be what a luxury car looks like and so you can't get away from giant screens you can't get away from sort of um you know minimal seat uh design um yeah it's i i, I have found that really fascinating how tesla has changed the sort of expectation of oh this is what a luxury car looks like on the inside and so you wind when you wind up with an actual luxury car um <laughs> you know I, I have a friend i've talked about uh my friends before who own a lincoln corsair um you know that's an actual luxury car my sure. god that interior is beautiful it's right. gorgeous it's so comfortable right. right yeah it's like and getting into a tesla and i've been in a couple uh it sort of feels like i'm uh, it sort of feels like I sat down in an Ikea and I like Ikea. Right. Ikea yeah. is great. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. ever spend $70,000 on anything from Ikea though. Listen, I've said this before. We've said this, so like we want everyone to succeed. Mm -hmm. But when, when you put so many obstacles in your own way in that work, you know, that aiming for success and feeling like, well, we were successful in 2022. We'll just keep moving forward. You know, we'll do less, you know, less stocks or less gear shifts or less buttons or whatever. And we'll all just put it on the screen, you know, and, and uh, wow, you know. It, yeah, it, boy, I totally forgot about that whole turn signal situation. Like we've, and, and the turn signal thing and the yoke thing, it's like, we solved turn signals and steering wheels already. <laughs> We've solved and, it. NPR and DL. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I don't know. I, we're, a future episode we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about improvements to cars. But there you go. Until then, mm. <laughs> and I put improvements, you know, in scale Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this has been fun for us anyway. <laughs> I'm at us, haters. <laughs> our our cyber truck issue, which is, uh, episode, which is I think the first one you were on, uh, I think is still our top, you know, viewed thing. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But all right, so number one, we're still looking for weird cars. Uh, send me your picture and a little bit of a description about the that weird car that you really like um to d stewart at fox 61.com number two uh like and subscribe on our youtube page for fox 61 news uh helps us out tremendously if you give if you give us a like there um uh, and um i think that's it for this week um jeff i always appreciate you showing up and probably going out without your dinner but <laughs> <laughs> dinner is on the way okay uh and and glenn will return i promise glenn will return uh and um and that's it for this week all right see y'all good night fairfield county wherever you are